G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and here are some of the best bits from my most watched videos in 2019. Also, I'll have a quick chat at the end of the video if you wanna hang around. Let's get into it. I'm gonna show you guys how to turn this shredded paper into this fantastic, fertile, beautiful organic plant food. Turn your awful overcharging council rates bill into wonderful composted worm and plant food. Step number three, turn your tumbler. I told you these steps were easy, didn't I? Really does look beautiful, doesn't it? Oh, crikey, it's hot. G'day, top vegetables that are the easiest to grow in a hot summer. If you wanna try something that the pharaohs were munching on back when they built the pyramids, try growing Egyptian spinach with roughly four times the goodness of regular spinach. So imagine how big your muscles could grow with that. Popeye, eat your heart out. Number six, Kang Kong. Sounds like a movie about a giant kangaroo, doesn't it? So I say, hail the kale. Crikey, pushing this barrow full of sweet potato is hard yakka. I better put him down and have a rest. Did you know that sweet potatoes isn't related to potatoes at all? In fact, it's part of the morning glory family of climbing plants, which are known more for flowers than tubers. But let's not elaborate on that. Watering your plants can be a particularly fun time to take care of nasty bugs and a great way to relieve stress or train the eye. Removing pests like this can make a big difference in slowing down their population growth in the garden, and it's not that hard. Well, I better let this one go because I don't think she likes me very much. Having a few chickens around can help reduce pests overall and break the life cycle of bad bugs. When I was in Nam, no, not the war, how old do you think I am? You can easily make a very effective pest oil spray at home by mixing two cups of cooking oil with one cup of dishwashing liquid and then use about a tablespoon of this mix per litre in a spray bottle and it will smother rather than poison the insect. What happens when you bury kitchen scraps in the garden? We'll dig down and find out how these scraps are going after being buried for a period. I'm not sure how it came to grief, but I buried him here about 18 months ago. And since then, I've grown a ton of onions in this very raised bed. So maybe that had something to do with it. Let's have a dig down and see if there's anything remaining of our old pigeon mate. I'm digging down with my hands because It'd be so much more effective on camera if I grabbed a handful of something icky. Some people say that I look like Russell Crowe, and that's okay, because I love the movie Gladiator. That opening scene when his hand is surfing the top of the grass, he sees a sparrow and he smells the dirt. Yeah, I do that all the time in my backyard. Lemongrass has a lot more uses besides just looking at it, and is widely known to relieve insomnia, aid ingestion, reduce blood pressure and anxiety, to even weight loss, especially if that's all you ate. Or drank, because it makes an excellent tea. Mmm. <sighs> to prune or not to prune tomato plants? That is the question five top fruit trees that are just too easy to grow. So easy, in fact, that you'll feel like it's stealing for harvesting fruit that you've hardly lifted a finger to produce. I mean, where would we be without lemons? No lemon face to start off with. Know the saying plum job, meaning an easy job? Well, in the old English days, plum meant 1,000 pounds, which was a lot of money back then. Plum also was slang for soft, hence the saying plum job to describe an easy job that pays well. And a plum tree is an easy tree to grow that pays you well in fruit. See what I did there? Honestly, I love them. Just eating them fresh like that. Normal people prefer to use kumquats in other ways, such as jams, marmalade, candied kumquats 
or liqueurs. However you eat them is up to you. Just grow it. The Great Alexander the Great. I think I dressed up as him once. No, that was Napoleon. Anyway, Alexander the Great is credited to have found dwarf apples growing in Kakistan around 2,500 years ago. So already back then, humans had started cultivating apples. Have you recently had a barbecue or a bonfire in the backyard? It can be a real lot of fun. But did you know that the ashes from one of these fires can be spread around the garden to produce more, bigger, better, healthier, tastier fruit and veg. Well, the K actually stands for potash or potassium. You'd think it'd be NPP, wouldn't you? <laughs> but it's not. The K is Latin or something like that, uh, or means some, it's the element. So, yeah. You could probably wear a face mask for this. I probably should be, but I wanna talk in this video and not sound like <laughs> I'm just giving myself a clap. Do you know how expensive passion fruit can be? It's outrageous to pay so much money for something that grows so easily. Did you hear that? That was a passion fruit dropping. They're bloody heavy. You wouldn't want that to hit you on the noggin. We had friends over for a barbie the other day and we took them for a walk around in the garden and we come across the passion fruits and one of them said, Ugh, passion fruits, they grow like a weed. And we all laughed. It's true. And we're gonna turn these little fellas into the best tomato sauce you'll ever wanna taste. In America, they call this ketchup. In Australia, we say ketchup if you can. And we call tomato sauce, dead horse. 1200, 1609, 1610, 1611, 1611, 1611, 12, 1, 1761. It's missing one thing. I think I know what it is. Hang on. Yeah, that's what it's missing. A dog's eye. I'm sure that will taste a heck of a lot better now. And that's just a few examples of what we've grown here on our small acreage. G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and in this video, I'm gonna give you my six things that makes our food garden so successful. Let's get into it. Check out the scrub turkey getting into our chicken manure. <laughs> not that I think the world is gonna end in 10 years because it's not, but with prices of food increasing due to greedy energy corporations and elite investors artificially inflating electricity prices, supermarkets crushing competition, stagnant wages, fragile financial markets, drought and never ending wars, I think the best investment for the future is a food garden. You can burn money, but you can't eat it. If you place a piece of copper wire through the stem of a tomato plant, will it help prevent disease and keep the plant healthy and producing for longer? G'day. But what do you guys think? Holy shit, he is huge. He's a big boy, very dangerous. What you just saw climbing into our chicken nesting boxes was the Eastern Brown, the third most deadliest snake in the world. 
Now, at one point in this video, I thought the snake had gone, but it so happened that when I was collecting the eggs, he was there the whole time. Why would you bother growing potatoes at home? I mean, they're as cheap as chips to buy in the supermarket or from a takeaway food store. Well, there are several good reasons why you should. The sun's killing me out here. But you can't see my face with the hat on. I know, I know, I'll get inside soon. I should answer the question, did this type of electric fence set up stop our chickens from getting attacked by wild dogs and foxes? And the answer is a resounding yes. Come on, you're supposed to all run out. That was the cue. The foxes and wild dogs worked out how to get over and some even got through it. That was when one day in just one session, probably lasting only minutes, a fox got in and cleaned up all our birds. I was so disappointed and angry with myself for letting this happen that I became more determined than ever to make this fence line absolutely predator proof and I knew the only real practical way I could do this was by electrifying it. All right, you don't want me to keep the fence off it. <laughs> if I get stung, <laughs> you're in trouble. <laughs> Bloody hell, what's he done to me? Is it on or off? It's off. Oh, thank God for that. <laughs> we scared. Shit myself. Although this Cook Chook electric fence stress test didn't capture a fox or dog trying to penetrate our defences, it did highlight how smaller animals could still easily get through and even a small fox or dog can do a lot of damage. So not to take any chances, I tacked some good quality chicken wire to the inside of the dog fence. If I'm honest, this electric fence is more than just peace of mind. It's payback because the thought of foxes and dogs out there watching in, salivating over the thought of eating one of our chickens, but knowing they can't get in is a great deal of satisfaction to me. G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and in this video, I'm going to show you what happens when you bury a fish head underneath a tomato plant. On the southern side of the barrier and transplanted four young Scorpio tomato plants that were surplus and growing in our tunnel trellis. I guess it is a fishy experiment. I think it's a no-brainer. Well, there's no brain in this one. I, that's a pretty bad joke. I think that that's, well, the plants probably ate it. I wonder if tomato plants can get some intelligence. Uh, that's, I don't think I'll ever be able to prove that experiment. And it's a win-win for everyone, except for the fish, I suppose. Thumbs up. Fishy thumbs up. Make sure you give it a big electrified thumbs up. Big fat potato thumbs up. You give me a big successful thumbs up. Give it a big red thumbs up. Big passionate thumbs up. Big fat sweet thumbs up. Give it a flaming hot, red hot thumbs up. Big brown or green thumbs up. Big wireless thumbs up. Snaky thumbs up. Make sure you give it a big dirty thumbs up. And don't forget to give this video a big 2020 thumbs up, saluting another big year ahead. And 2019 was a big year for my channel. It was a breakthrough year. It was the first time for me since I started creating content in 2011 that I've actually been able to make a living, a proper living out of content creation. And that is huge for me. So thank you all very much for helping me do that. I'd also like to specifically thank my supporters on Patreon because you guys have backed me directly and this has helped me follow my passion without worrying too much about the ups and downs of YouTube and not have to now 
think about or go into the orthodox workforce, which is where I was heading, coming to the end of my home dad years, now that my boys are almost finished high school. Not that there's anything wrong with the general workforce at all. It's just that my passion and the most fun I have and the thing that I'd love to do full time as far as a job goes or work is doing what I do. And that's content creation, creating videos, podcasts, writing. I mean, it's what I have fun doing and if I can make a living out of it, that's my dream job. I hope you all have a great start to 2020. And if you haven't yet got into self-sufficiency, I encourage you to make 2020 the year that you become self-sufficient in something. Thanks again for your support. See you next year. Get into it.